ARSI, the American Research Center in Egypt. ARSI's website states as follows. Among ARSI's many great achievements is our relationship with the Supreme Council of Antiquities, the SCA, within the Egyptian Ministry of Culture, without whom our work would not be possible. RC is viewed as making important contributions that serve to help Egypt directly in its pursuit of cultural heritage preservation. What this statement confesses to is the implication and more than likely collaboration with Egyptian authorities to cover up the real truth about ancient Egypt. In 1992, German robotics engineer Rudolf Gantenbrick was exploring shafts within the Queen's Chamber at the Great Pyramid using a crawler robot he had designed himself. His intentions were to install an air conditioning system within the pyramid's existing design. While exploring these ancient tunnels, he discovered one of the shafts was blocked by a tiny limestone blocking door, a secret doorway only accessible with the use of robotic technology. Rudolf Gantenbrick, who was able to map, explore, and analyze the shafts for many years, believed a second door would have suggested the possibility that there would be yet another 40 centimeters further away. His hypothesis, based on the knowledge that many ancient Egyptian funerary monuments were equipped with a series of three blocking doors placed close to each other in succession before the entrance to a sacred tomb. In 2002, the National Geographic Society discovered this second door. Using their own robot known as Pyramid Rover, this event, closely supervised by RC, who subsequently pulled the plug on the whole operation regarding the shafts. The team had a simple solution to Gantenbrick's problem. They sent the robot along the shaft, gripping the walls instead of the ceiling and floor. In this manner, it was somehow able to ride over the top of the obstacles. The rover's journey along the northern shaft revealed yet another door, just as Gantenbrick's claimed. Mysterious hieroglyphs, written on the floor of the hidden tunnels within Egypt's Great Pyramid, were shown to the world in an initial report on the robot's discoveries, published within the Du Service des Antiquities. The images revealed features that had not been seen by human eyes since the construction of the monument. Researchers from around the world were particularly intrigued by three red ochre figures painted upon the tunnel's end deep inside the pyramid. Books such as Giza the Truth by Chris Harold and Ian Lawton the Stargate Conspiracy by Lynn Picknett and Clive Prince, and Secret Chamber by Robert Balville have all, thanks to the tremendous and diligent research accomplished within, shed light upon the controversy surrounding the Giza Plateau and the Secret Chamber's existence. The key question, the theme witnessed throughout these studies, was whether information has been withheld, discoveries undisclosed, and an understanding of the pyramids and Sphinx's existence purposefully kept hidden from the world. On the 22nd of March, 1993, Dr. Zawi Hawass was suspended from his position as chief inspector of the Giza Pyramid Plateau. It seems Gantenbrick took an opportunity, while the powers that be were distracted, to announce his findings to the world press in early April. It would appear, after substantial digging, that the string pullers within Egypt originate out of America and are stationed within Egypt in the form of Arsi. The truth regarding what is buried beneath these ancient structures may still remain a mystery, but realizing the obstacles obstructing an understanding of this truth is half the battle won. In 1879, British archaeologist Wayneman Dixon successfully retrieved a number of mysterious artifacts from within the infamous lower northern shaft of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. One of these artifacts was a small piece of a square wooden rod which has since disappeared, the only artifact to conveniently go missing, and the only artifact which could have produced an accurate dating for what seems was a rather elaborate prior attempt to overcome a sophisticated array of blocking stones and vertical passageways which confront all who try to breach the innermost sanctums of this mysterious pyramid. The reason for this past mission, or indeed who undertook such an attempt, remain a mystery, but their motive will soon become clear. One of Wayneman's other finds, resembling a small grappling hook with two rivets, matches two holes in a square rod still lodged up in the vertical northern shaft, clearly left by these wannabe tomb raiders. 
It seems that these highly talented, acrobatic grave robbers couldn't make it any further, and once one becomes aware of the existence of a large hidden chamber built into the pyramid's design, placed just above this unexplored shaft, you will inevitably begin to wonder what could possibly be hiding up there. Indeed, it's a well-known fact that the builders of these structures were notorious for their superhuman efforts in concealment. Huge multi-ton blocking stones in front of the entrances to their kings and treasures, and indeed in front of virtually every interior shaft and room within the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The upper region of this northern shaft constitutes the last remaining unexplored areas due to the impossible access angle. We know it's there, and all we have to do is apply existing technology in getting in there, Rudolf Gattenbrink told the press. It must be noted, although the mention of tombs has been made, the evidence to suggest such is based solely upon a number of parchments and a single mark found within an interior chamber of the pyramid, naming a gang and the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu. Egyptologists have taken these fragmentary factors and concluded that all pyramids were therefore built as tombs, the Great One being built over a 10 to 20 year period, concluding around 2560 BC. It seems the entire thesis of ancient Egyptian legacy is built around a few mentions of the pyramids as tombs. No mummies or burial artifacts except a tiny box claimed to be that of the sarcophagus of Khufu has ever been found in the pyramids. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, Khufu's Egyptian civilization, along with all subsequent and prior dynasties, catalogued tremendous details regarding their existence, yet all, for some reason, seemingly forget to mention the construction of the biggest, most mysterious structures on Earth, or indeed, how they did it. What could there possibly be hidden within this chamber? This unexplored, and clearly sought after secret room, a room which is seemingly unrobbable. With mainstream Egyptologists, archaeologists and academic historians alike insisting that these amazing pyramids were once unquestionably tombs which were robbed completely over the millennia. Whatever this room contains may settle this once and for all. There are many unique ancient megastructures that can be found all over the world with Japan being no exception. However, interestingly, some of these extremely ancient earthworks cannot be found anywhere else on Earth. Known as a Kufan, these unique yet highly recognizable shaped earthworks, translated as meaning ancient mound tomb or ancient grave in Japanese, we feel could quite possibly also be found upon Mars. Not only could, but may have already been located and identified. Of course, without actually visiting the planet, we cannot confirm this beyond doubt. Yet the similarities between these two locations is unquestionably compelling. The best known Kofun within Japan is known as the Dyson Kofun, approximately 500 meters long and 300 meters across at its widest point. It is an enormous ancient structure with the entire tomb perimeter measuring in at 840 meters long. Enclosed by three moats, the mound rises approximately 35 meters above the surrounding terrain. The inner moat is the widest at approximately 60 meters, with the entire mound being approximately 100,000 square meters in area, and the entire tomb some 460,000 square meters. Today, the tomb is off-limits, protected by the Imperial Household Agency in the center of Sakai City. The moats are maintained and provide a sanctuary for fish and water birds. Although conveniently, the mound itself has been left completely overgrown by vegetation, this regardless of the risk of deterioration by the roots of trees, along with the additional point of them being tourist attractions. One has to wonder whether this deliberate choice to leave them completely obscured by trees is actually an attempt to conceal their shape from the rest of the world. Why leave such clearly important ancient structures engulfed in trees, with root systems left to flourish that are notorious for destroying ancient structures? Why make such a decision 
if they were not indeed attempting to conceal these enigmatic earthworks. We strongly suspect, although with only circumstantial evidence of course, that a lost civilization, possibly a mother civilization of Earth, will one day be confirmed upon Mars. It continues to be a puzzling question as to why some of the most ancient ruins on Earth are also seemingly the most advanced. Is this fact suggestive of intercontinental travel? Possibly are highly advanced ancient ancestors having built such awe-inspiring structures upon their arrival to our planet after traveling here from Mars? Could there possibly be ancient Kofuns, and indeed other ancient structures and tombs still left upon the Red Planet, waiting to be rediscovered, waiting to inform our modern civilization of another chunk of human history? Why are these enigmatic, iconic ancient Kofuns only found within Japan? Why does this anomaly on Mars look exactly like one? Why do the Japanese continue to conceal the Kofun's true shape beneath dense tree lines? We find all of these suspicious factors highly compelling. Continuing on from our previous video where Don discusses the amazing and incredibly intricate artistic wonder that is the Kailash Temple, we felt it a good time to cover another incredible ancient wonder and indeed set of rock-cut temples known as Madan Saleh. Predictably, a little shared enigmatic site, it is located within modern-day Saudi Arabia. Purportedly dating from the Nabataean Kingdom, 1st century AD, it is the southernmost settlement after the better-known, yet no less impressive Petra, made famous by the Indiana Jones epics. In 2008, UNESCO proclaimed Madan Saleh a site of patrimony becoming Saudi Arabia's first World Heritage Site. 131 rock-cut monumental structures said to have been built as tombs. However, as they were cut with such precision, their existence is clearly a mysterious one. Very little is known regarding the ancient builders of these sites. The little we do know was left on several mysterious and invaluable plaques, which adorn a select few of these rock-cut structures. Although the insides of the tombs appear to have been rather crudely finished, the outer exteriors are clearly phenomenally refined. For a civilization even a mere 2,000 years ago to have managed to create such precise structures remains a tough thing for mainstream archaeology to explain. Just like the many other sites, Pumapunka, Giza, etc., etc., they display a far superior level of ability to that of which we are led to believe. And as always, mystery history presumes it is not the historic record which is incorrect, but rather the antiquity of these structures which is actually being hidden, their true age concealed and attributed to a post-cataclysmic civilization rather than their true creator. The Nabataeans, the academically claimed builders, were quite advanced for their chronological position within history regardless, supposedly having a strongly democratic society sharing wealth and land equally amongst the tribe. They also displayed an incredibly complex understanding of hydraulic systems. The name Mada and Saleh, or the city of Salih, is also interestingly associated with a very ancient prophet, which is also connected to an ancient tribe known as the tribe of Talmud. Saleh is also the equivalent to a very ancient figure mentioned within the Hebrew Bible. The tribe of Talmud, said to be the descendants of the biblical Noah, However, the Tamid were also said to have become very corrupt, materialistic, and stopped believing in God. According to the accounts, this is when God sent Prophet Salih to warn them that if they would continue in that way, they would be destroyed, a prophecy which eventually came true. To this day, the remains of the ancient sites are considered by some to be cursed. What do you think regarding the rock-cut tombs of Mada and Saleh? Remnants left by a culture some 2,000 years ago with the use of copper and stone tools? Or structures left by a far more advanced, far more capable ancient people, whose entire existence is attributed to others, subsequently concealing it here upon our planet? Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Many of the most ancient stone structures we cover here upon our channel, whose origins undoubtedly span far back into Earth's antiquity, in our experience, are often, unfortunately, 
due to the rigid, unchanging conclusions set forth in regards to academic history just over a century ago, we'll not only encounter reoccurring anomalies, suspiciously precise stone cuts, unexplainable by any of our lesser capable yet institutionally permitted ancestors with whatever said civilization were to equip with, yet regardless and rather arrogantly refuse to budge in terms of the official tale of events. This then means that anyone with critical thinking skills will continually and often come across feats of ancient engineering somehow accomplished by said people, enormous and perfectly refined stone carvings that, according to, and as a result of, academic institutions' reluctance to budge must be explained away as having, somehow, once been cut and created with tools of a soft metal. Yet in reality, this is simply an impossibility. It is a lie only possible on paper, yet this lie is mass-printed all over our planet. It is in Mystery History's opinion that these advanced and thus inexplicable features which litter our videos in abundance are each and all clear evidence of a far more advanced yet far more ancient and thus lost civilization. Additionally, another reoccurring theme anyone exploring this confusing, enigmatic, and although little shared, ever-growing list of ancient unexplainable structures, no funded individual dare attempt to explain the methodology of said build but will find that they are, instead, extremely eager to willingly and immorally seal the fate of these marvelous buildings' legacy, condemning them to the ever-growing list we like to call the label of the tomb. A ruthless, willing, and well-funded army of researchers, tasked with exploring any archaeology from a very specific time period, thus we posit any re-inhabitation of said site's archaeology is used nearly always absent an explanation as to how they built said buildings, depending the construction on whom is most convenient. An eventual attribution for all of these exquisite and quite possibly incredible important historical relics as simply tombs. We have in the past touched upon false doors, claimed witchcraft, which seemingly permeated all ancient civilizations worldwide from littering the 1,000-ton-plus toppled obelisk of Aksum, exposing the advanced ruins in Ethiopia, but also the Giza Plateau among countless other locations on Earth seemingly spanning many lost civilizations' ruins. And the site which is the focus of this video, we feel, is one of the most awe-inspiring false doors on Earth. When it comes to false doors, a sheer mountain side carved away perfectly not only creating a tomb of master stonework in a time of history, when this should have simply been impossible. Its false door, however, proof of its far greater age, leading into some incredible landscape, makes it a site which undoubtedly adds intrigue to the mystery of the false door, and whether we will ever unlock its fullest potentials. We previously covered one in Peru in a subject-specific film. Link will be at the end local legend claimed it was once a portal. It is clearly a false door, as seen all over the world, just like that of Axum, seemingly laser-cut into the hillside. What we found highly compelling, however, was that it had been cut into the only mountainside in all of Peru to have possessed an extremely rare earth element in the stone, which we now use in high-end transmission of radio, sound, and light waves. Every day, we get closer and closer to finally understanding what these doors were. Kapilikea Rock Tomb is not only an extraordinarily well-located ruin, located in Kirkdilim, 27 kilometers north of Churum, Turkey, on a rocky, steep, rough-formed, thus hard bedrock. It is clearly a relic of one of the lost civilizations we have long been studying not only due to the precision of the stone cut the masterful choice of location, but also the use of the false door, in our opinion, proves beyond doubt that this ruin was made by the same lost civilization or civilizations as we are currently pursuing an identity and a legacy for here upon our channel. A civilization once capable of moving and building with 1,000 plus ton megalithic stones, possibly even the builders of or the descendants of the true group of people responsible for the Great Pyramids themselves. 
Many things which do not add up are often overlooked or dismissed. But in our experience, the ancient ruins never lie if you let them tell the story and explore said relics with a quest to understand what they may still be able to tell us. It does not matter what others may claim, for as we know, the truth will always prevail. And that is something we find highly compelling.